Hello people, in this video let us look at uh, proliferative uh, diabetic retinopathy or, or you can also say PDR. Okay, first of all let's take a recap, where are we? We are looking at diabetic retinopathy in ophthalmology. So basically, <clears throat> you know what diabetes is, hyperglycemia, chronic uh, retina, you know what retina is, it's the sensory membrane that lines the inner surface of the back of the eyeball. So this is one of the leading causes of blindness. So let us look at this topic. Uh, why does diabetic retinopathy happen? If people have a longer duration of diabetes, they can develop retinopathy, problem with retina. So, um, they are not controlling, right, the uh, glucose level. So, all this will lead to what and all, di diabetic retinopathy. Some other things they are writing here, risk factors, pregnancy, hypertension, etc. Smoking, obesity, anemia, hyperlipidemia as usual. All this we have seen in the previous videos, isn't it? So, uh, diabetic retinopathy pathogenesis, first of all, there is hyperglycemia, then they, they'll go, uh, it, there will be microangiopathy. So, what and all is happening? Sorbitol accumulation, then uh, advanced glycation, glycation uh, products will be there, right? <clears throat> Activation of this protein kinase C isoforms, oxidative stress, and that too, it's not just oxidative stress, excessive oxidative stress will be there. So, because of all this, then what is happening? Platelets are getting more st uh, adhesive, blood viscosity is increasing, RBCs are getting deformed and they are becoming Rolex, you can see that here. Lipids are altered abnormally, abnormally right? Fibrinolysis increases, leukostasis increases. So, in leukostasis, there will be extremely elevated blast cells, okay? And tissue perfusion will be low. So, we have looked at the pathogenesis, then what and all have we seen in the previous video? Because of the microangiopathy, what will happen? There will be microaneurysms. Edema will be there. Remember, microaneurysms will be there. Then, there will be ischemia. Very important. Because of this, there will be neovascularization can happen. Because of all these factors which help in neovascularization, like the VGEF, PDGF, HGF, vascular uh, endothelial growth factor, isn't it? What is VG? VE, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, all this are, these are very important terms you have to write. Microangiopathy, edema, microaneurysm, ischemia, VGEF, neovascularization, all this will happen. Same thing they have shown here. See, all these problems in the blood, then microvascular occlusion is happening. Occlusion is leading to ischemia. Ischemia is leading to neovascularization. So, diabetes for a long time, finally, neovascularization they have written. Okay. This is what we are looking at, PDR. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy, neovascularization, important. So, in diabetic retinopathy, you have so many types. You have non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, proliferative di diabetic retinopathy, which we are looking at in this video. Then you have diabetic maculopathy, advanced diabetic eye disease. So, let's get started with proliferative diabetic retinopathy, PDR. So, what happens? There is a long-standing uh, diabetes for about 20 years like that, let's say. And these people go from NPDR, they are going now into what? PDR proliferative diabetic retinopathy they are going into. So, these, uh, this is uh, like after 20 years, so you need not worry about it much. What what, what do you say? But it is um, more common in patients with juvenile onset diabetes because they got the diabetes earlier, then they will land up with PDRs at a younger age, right? Compared to the other people who get diabetes at an older age. So, here what is happening? Occlusion, ischemia, hypoxia, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, neovascularization. This is important, okay? Neovascularization, basically this is the hallmark of diabetic retinopathy, you should remember. It's the hallmark of diabetic retinopathy. In fact, the textbook says it is hallmark of proliferative diabetic retinopathy or something. Okay. So, it is characterized by what? New blood vessels in the form of capillaries. So, people, what are we looking at? Proliferative diabetic retinopathy, right? So, what have we seen now? Proliferative retinopathy is, has come from where? From NPDR, where now there is neovascularization. So, that is the hallmark of uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. What do you see here? Capillaries, new vessels in the form of capillaries. So, let's make it red. What do you say? New uh, vessels in the form of capillaries. Okay. So, uh, these capillaries can be at the optic disc or it can be elsewhere in the fundus. Okay. So, this is what you have to know. So, there are two types. So, here the fun, uh, optic disc. So, neovascularization at the optic disc or elsewhere in the fundus usually along the course of the major temporal retinal vessels. So, temporal retinal vessels along that there can be neovascularization. So, you have NVD 
Neovascularization disc, neovascularization elsewhere. NBD, NBE you have. So what is forming here? Because of diabetes, ischemia, occlusion happened because of the ischemia. Now then there is uh, uh, VEGF, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. Now that is leading to neovascularization. In that there are two types that you should know. NBD, NVE. Okay. Then um, these vessels may proliferate in the plane of retina and spread into the vitreous. Now from uh, so if this is retina, from there now they are coming where to the vitreous. So now they have reached the vitreous also. First you saw fundus and uh, along the temporal retinal vessels. Now they have come to vitreous also. As vascular fronds, they have some fancy name vascular fronds. So later on they result in the formation of what? Later on results in the formation of what's written here? Retinal, epiretinal membrane, a fibrovascular epiretinal membrane formed due to condensation of the tissue, connective tissue around these new vessels. So now some new membrane is forming. Okay, epiretinal membrane, fibrovascular epiretinal membrane. Vitreous detachment can happen, vitreous hemorrhage can happen. Vitreous hemorrhage is a very important thing that you should know here because of all this vascularization. What is happening? So if this is the eye and this is the retina and this is the vitreous, all these vascular fronts came. Now what is happening? Some epiretinal membrane is happening, fibrovascular, epiretinal membrane, then vitreous detached, vitreous can get detached and there can be vitreous hemorrhage. Okay, vitreous hemorrhage is very important. So this can lead to vision loss. So there are types of uh, uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So there can be without HRCs, that is high risk characteristics or with high risk characteristics look like. So what are the high risk characteristics? Okay, so uh, here you have NVD, NVE. So in NVD, let us look at uh, what they are saying here. Uh, disc area is involved. NVD, how much of disc area is involved? With or without uh, vitreous hemorrhage or pre-retinal hemorrhage, that doesn't matter. But NVD, this much of the disc area is involved. Now, if NVD le less than quarter also, but if there is vitreous hemorrhage or pre-retinal hemorrhage, then they are putting it as another high characteristic. And if NVE elsewhere, if there is uh, neovascularization greater than half disc area with vitreous hemorrhage or pre-retinal hemorrhage. Some huge thing about high risk characteristics. Did you understand what are high risk characteristics? Some NVD is there. Two times they have written NVD. Then they have written NVE. So here they are talking about definitely vitreous hemorrhage should be there or pre-retinal hemorrhage should be there in these two. Okay. In this one, it may or may not be there, but the disc area is involved 0.25 to 0.3 kind of a, um, uh, that much area. Correct, right? What I'm saying. Okay. Let's move on. So here they are showing the uh, early PDR. This is early PDR. They are saying this one is, um, E is early PDR. Is it? Yeah. F is high risk PDR, high risk characteristics. Okay. And this one is what? G, focal exudative diabetic maculopathy. So this has gone to the next one, maculopathy, diabetic maculopathy. Mem remember, maculopathy is also very important in diabetic uh, retinopathy. Okay, let's move on now. So diabetic maculopathy, guys, this is important. See, what happens is you have to write, there is macular edema, diabetic macular edema happens. This diabetic maculopathy can happen because of NPDR or PDR, guys. So remember that this affects vision, so you should know about this diabetic maculopathy. There is something called as clinically sig significant macular edema, uh, CSME, if you want to look, in, look at that in the textbook. Then coming to advanced diabetic eye disease, here what they are saying is uncontrolled proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So now PDR became uncontrolled, uncontrolled PDR. Okay, let's remember like this. Uncontrolled PDR results in what? Advanced diabetic eye disease. Now here, what and all are the complications? Persistent vitreous hemorrhage, tractional retinal detachment, neovascular glaucoma. See, vitreous hemorrhage you already know, right? Now they are adding two more things. Tractional, remember this word important, tractional in diabetes, what will be there? Tractional retinal detachment, kind, some kind of a pull for the retina. It will get pulled, uh, tractional retinal detachment, neovascular glaucoma because of all the new blood vessels, increased uh, pressure looks like and they will have glaucoma. So you will have to write these three at the uh, prolonged PDR, what will happen? Okay, uncontrolled PDR. So in uncontrolled PDR, what happens guys? So let's, these three are very important. So now what happened? A lot of new blood vessels have come. 
right now uh, there is a uh, vascular fronds or something right vitreous hemorrhage now because of all this uh, tractional retinal detachment retina is going to get uh, detached tractional it's getting pulled tractional retinal detachment then because of all this increased pressure you will have neovascular glaucoma right very good so now let us move on to management of diabetic retinopathy in that you have